Hello and welcome to Reading's Transgender Day of Remembrance Vigil 2021, our sixth event. My name is Hannah Phillips and I will be your host today. Transgender Day of Remembrance started in 1999. It is a day to mourn and remember those who we have lost in our community. But it is a day where we come as a collective and unite as one, as a community. Tonight, we will be reading the names of the people within our community who have sadly lost their lives. The majority of those are transgender people of color. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we will be holding the event once again virtually. I hope you will join us as we hear from the great distinguished speakers from across the community and say their name as we remember those lost marking the end of the vigil with a minute's silence. It has been a hard year for the community with hate crimes on a rise as well as hostile groups and right-winged politicians. Hi. I'm Bobby Pickard. I am CEO of Trans in the City, which is the world's biggest corporate collaboration for trans awareness. I am completely honoured to be asked to do this message by my umbrella LGBT+. Um, it really is something very special, so thank you very much. Trans Awareness Week is one of those weeks when supposedly everybody comes together for trans people. And it's a time where we get to show our real selves to the world instead of the rubbish that gets constantly sent out by the media, by the BBC, by the Times, constantly. It's a time when we should be celebrating being trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming, because it's something that should be celebrated, because it's something that's special. Instead, what we really have in Trans Awareness Week is a time when most of us feel completely exhausted, completely assaulted by the extra hate that gets sent our way. Lots of the times we feel let down by our allies that are more than happy to tell us in private how disgusted they are of the treatment of trans, non-binary and gender non-conforming people. But we see them doing nothing else. First of all, I really want to thank every single trans, non-binary and gender non-conforming person for doing what you do, for standing up for yourself, for being true to the wonderful, wonderful people you are. And I want to ask those allies those people that consider yourself allies, that don't stand up for trans people, that don't publicly do things to help trans people, to please start doing so. I know there's a, a common thing that I hear that you can't speak for trans people, and you can't. You can't speak for what it feels like to be trans or non-binary or gender non-conforming. But you don't have to speak for trans people to defend them. You know, you wouldn't speak for a black person to speak out at racism. And this is the same. It's costing people's mental well-being and it's costing people's lives. And the assault on trans people is getting worse. Trans Day of Remembrance is something very special to me and uh, <laughs> I always get emotional talking about it especially this time of year. I've known five people take their own lives not because they were trans but because they weren't allowed to be trans because they got so much abuse for being trans that there was nothing left for them. Trans Day of Remembrance is the day when we remember those people we've lost on our journeys. But it's a time that we remember all of those people whose mental well-being has been so affected by the abuse that trans people have. I don't believe there's any, if any at all, 
trans, non-binary or gender non-conforming people in this country that haven't been damaged by the abuse from the media. They haven't been damaged by the position that the government is currently, currently taking on trans rights. It needs to change. I will be thinking of those five people. I will be thinking of all of the other trans people we've lost. All of the other trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming people that are being so adversely affected. I will be remembering all of them. But most of all, I'll be thinking about all of us. All of the trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming people that are carrying on. Carrying on in the face of such abuse. You're all amazing, beautiful people. You're all valid. Take care. Every trans person's death is one death too many. Today we reflect and remind ourselves of those who have had their lives taken from them before their time. We hear the stories of the trans men and trans women, however, very rarely do we hear the stories of our non-binary siblings. This year, 404 trans people lost their lives. How many unaccounted for? How many identified outside the binary? Not too long ago, I lost a good friend of mine. Sadly, due to their situation, they're one of the unaccounted for. The perspective of how valuable life can be is often forgotten and drifts away from us. We understand death only after it's placed its hand on someone we treasure. Courage is being yourself every day in a world that tells you to be someone else. However, in my world, being visible as my true self takes more than just courage. The overwhelming anxiety which suffocates me due to the social pressure and those who surround me in every daily setting is something the majority of a community will rarely experience. To not fit in within the binary of the ex expectation of others is an irregular occurrence which is slowly growing. And with every year comes the awareness and education I craved all those years ago. Every trans person's death is a death too many. Sometimes I wonder if I'll be one of the ones accounted for when my time has come. How many years will my be name be remembered? Names on the list are people, just like you or me. I often remind myself that it's okay to be scared. Being scared means that I'm about to do something really brave. A flower doesn't think about competing with the flower next to it, it just blooms. The only thing that matters in life is your own opinion about yourself. Every trans person's death is a death too many. Hello, my name is Asifa Lahore, and I am commonly known as Britain's first out Muslim drag queen. I live my life as a transgender woman, and on Trans Day of Remembrance 2021, I would just like to take a moment for everyone to think about all the trans people around the world that we have lost, not just in the past 12 months, but for the time that we have always existed. Trans people have always been here, for as far back as records go, for as far back as civilizations go. Whether you identify as male, female, beyond the binary, non-binary, however you identify, you should have a right to live your life how you want. And I just want to take a moment to remember those people that were taken away from us too soon those people that didn't get to live their true authentic self for as long as they wanted on their own terms. I hope we can work together to create a world where anyone can live however they wish to choose and more importantly, they can be their authentic selves both inside, outside, despite whatever the world thinks. I'm Rachel Eden and as Mayor of Reading it's so important to me that Reading is a diverse town which celebrates equality. Of course we know that for some people that's hard to achieve and they face prejudice, discrimination and worse hate crime. Today we come together to remember those who've lost their lives simply for who they are, for being trans. It's important to all of us in Reading that we stay an equal, diverse town. 
trans women are women, trans men are men, and it's important to stand with them, to remember those who've lost their lives because of who they are, and to really commit to making sure that our town welcomes and is accepting of everybody. Firstly, I want to express my gratitude to everybody involved in organising events for this year's Transgender Day of Remembrance in Reading, and my thanks to everybody across the town and beyond who will be observing the day. And of course, Days of Remembrance are sombre occasions when we think of those who have lost their lives as a result of bigotry and prejudice in our world. But they're also very important occasions because they give us cause to reflect not only on those who have lost their lives and remember the contributions they made to our communities, but also to think of a better world that we want to build, a more inclusive, hopeful world of tomorrow. And also remembrance is always both an individual and a collective act. The individual element, of course, being very private to ourselves, but the collective element is of course our way of showing solidarity to one another. And that is especially important in today's very dislocated world. And the dislocated world that we find ourselves living in also allows prejudice and hatred to grow much more easily, much more unchallenged. There is too much hatred in our world and we all need to do our part to challenge it. We need to cool the temper of our discourse, but more importantly, we all need to stand up and ensure that we do our part to be good allies to those in the trans community. And so when I reflect this year on the Day of Remembrance, I'll remember those who have lost their lives as a result of anti-trans bigotry, hatred and prejudice and violence. But I'll also think to myself, challenge myself, to be a better ally in the years to come. Thank you. Well, thank you. And I'd like to thank uh, my umbrella for inviting me to talk today. Um, it's been a difficult year. I think we are here to remember the ones that we have lost, but we also need to remember those who have been hurt, intimidated, called names, through the year. Each day we kind of open up the newspaper to find stories about the community, but those stories are never written by the community. We also see the brigading of trans and gender non-conforming non -conforming people on social media, uh, with hundreds of anonymous accounts jumping on pro-trans remarks either members of, from members of the community or from supportive men and women. So in that mix of things, it can be very easy to lose heart. But what I would say is that our community is strong. We have the support of the majority of the people in the country. We have a community that sticks up for each other, that helps each other out. We have thousands attending protests outside of Downing Street and tens of thousands attending prides across the country. Inclusive prides that include everybody. So what I would say if you're watching this and you, you felt the pangs of despair or loss of hope is to say, stand tall, be proud of who you are, Persist. If you can, join a protest. If you're not too comfortable with that, write to your MP or your council, write to the BBC, say what you feel, make your voice heard. And if you can't do any of that, talk to a friend and get the support from your friends and communities of whom you have many. The comedian Steve Martin once remarked that persistence is happily a great substitute for talent. So you don't have to be the top protester and the top writer of letters. You just have to keep going. We will get to the other side of this and we will win this thing.
Thank you. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, my umbrella for inviting me here today to speak on Transit Day of Remembrance. Um, it's almost 10 years since I came out, and I can't really believe in the last 10 years how many of my brothers and sisters have been taken from us. It is, I'm not sure of the figure, but it's, it's still too many. You know, people say, oh, other people die as well, but, you know, being transgender seems to some people just to get under their skin. And, you know, and I don't understand that. Is it because I'm trans? I don't think so. It's because I'm, I maybe don't fit in. I know that I do, but I don't see a reason why I should. I'm a human being. I'm an individual like everybody else in this room today. So I I'm, I'm, want to use this day to look forward to a day when we can all live in harmony, a day when we can all live in peace, that, you know, that I can walk the streets without being insulted, without having my photograph taken, being laughed at because people think I'm a freak, you know, for just wanting to live my life. That's all I ask and all the, the trans, other trans people in this room ask as well, and all the trans people that I know across Reading and the country, that we live our lives from free from hate. That, you know, that even within the community, they seek to, that, that they understand us as well, rather than sort of doubling down on us, you know, that the, the turfs of this world don't win, that the people who aren't bigoted win, that the whole community comes together to fight for freedom. It's really all I have to say. Hello, my name is Nigel Bryce. I'm the inclusion officer for the UK Pride Organisers Network. And this is um, one of my colleagues from West Superman Pride. I'm Natasha, I'm the Inclusion Officer for Western Pride. Welcome, Tash, and thank you for agreeing to do this with us today um, for Trans Day of Remembrance. Um, and I've been asked to do this um, as the board for the UK Pride Organised Network for my umbrella um, that's based with Reading Pride. Trans Remembrance is a day to reflect on the lives of the trans community that are present and also those from the past. And for me, it always comes back to where our roots lie. And for me, in our office, we have this picture of Marsha P. Johnson, who, as many of you will know, was part of the Stonewall riots in 1969 and led the, the way for equality, the fight for equality within the Pride movement from there on. For me, it's about standing with our trans community on this day and really making their voices heard. The voices that probably in the past weren't heard. The voices in the past that have been held down, strangled, and, yeah, for many, either suicide, or death, or murder, and very unpleasant things have occurred in the trans community, um, and continue today. So, yeah, 
this is me sort of trying to just as a cis gay man say how I personally feel about today. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Tash, who I know, you know, has got a reflection of what it means for her. Well, transgender day remembrance, I see it as a reminder of how many lives have been lost over the previous year. And far back, like I've just said, it's far back into, into history for trans people who haven't had their voice heard and who have been stamped out, literally, um, to keep them in the closet and not accepted. And every life that we lose through violence, through their own hand, um, is a life wasted, unfortunately. There's still percentages in this country of around 48 to 49 percent of the trans people in the UK alone are lost to suicide every year. Um, I know how close I came uh, on several occasions in within the past five years. But through the acceptance of my pride team and my fans around me, I actually pulled through and I'm still here. But again, there's too many lives lost every year to violence at the hands of men, mainly. Um, there's um, I don't actually have a figure for this year, but last year there was nearly 300 people were murdered in America alone. And I don't know the figures from the UK, but there's going to be at least five or six trans people, trans women that were murdered in this country. And it's too many. So for me, transgender remembrance actually. It makes me reflect, it makes me think about the situation that we're at the moment, which is not acceptable. Why should I have to walk down the street and look over my shoulder all the time? Because I'm going to get jumped. So, so. So, I just want to hold this up. It says on there, power to the people. So, for myself, and from Tash. So here, sorry. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Thank you, my umbrella, for inviting us to do this. Um, Trans Day of Remembrance 2021. Let's remember. Hi, my name's Lee. And my name's Jenny, and we're co-chairs of the UK Pride Organisers Network. So we're here this evening to honour and support our friends in Tidor. It was very important to us that the network shows its support to all of our members and all of those people who were involved in Pride delivery up and down the UK. It's not just about the L, the B and the G. It's about the T too. And we're very, very keen to make sure that we promote our, our trans support all year round. Just the fact that trans people have been in support of Pride up and down the country alongside gay, lesbian and bisexual people and plus people and that for many decades and that gone. The fact that we're not actually standing with them now is disgusting. We need to stand with our allies and our friends because us as a group as a whole we're all victimised. We very much feel that we are stronger together and it's important to us that we promote throughout the network of Pride organisers here in the UK, that we should be supportive of the trans community and we should be inclusive in all that we do. So here's to the T and here's to remembering all that have sadly lost their lives and that before. We'd like to thank our friends at Reading Pride for giving us the opportunity to be involved in this broadcast 
and we'd like to encourage you all to make sure that you do remember this tea door. And we hopefully see you at the next UpBon conference. Within this reality, there's a fear within us all. As we stand on this edge of an internal calamity, every breath in and out, this feeling of intense suffocation to the shadow people lurking in every city, what do you get? Gratification? For they steal the lives of our siblings, a human like you or me, taunting us with the echoing words once preached by our peers at school. You'll never be a real woman. Real? What does that mean? For once in my life, I am being myself. But when I do, when I finally show you who I am, then it isn't how you once pictured me, mum. I'm sorry. I am sorry. For the factor that it makes you shudder, every time you have to call me your daughter. Dad, look, I apologize. I chose happiness over your approval. You always wanted me to be strong, brave, and tough, but I became so much more than that. I was strong when I told you who I was, brave to let the whole world see me for who I am, tough enough to put on a face of courage every time I gazed into the soulless eyes of the shadow people. 365 days in a year. There are many people like me who witnessed their final breath. Families invaded with loss. Somehow, in 2021, the shadow people did not hear our pleads to be let go, our begs not to be shot, or our prayers of hope that our family will be able to identify our bodies when morning comes. This figure is forever on the rise. How long will it take for someone in control to recognize that the world currently isn't good enough and the amount of teens dying because they can't handle the rejection from the people we are taught to love unconditionally? That simple education and acceptance isn't the whole equation to a calculation which determines if someone's gonna live or die. To get to the root of the problem, that's what they state. Maybe we should stop looking at the educational facilities and focus on those in power. For the time is now, unite as one, to stand as a community and order, not one more. My name is Christina Dearlove. I am one of the founders of My Umbrella LGBT+. Yet again this year, on Transgender Day Remembrance, we're here to remember the transgender people we have lost. Too many people have been taken through murder and suicide. I can understand why so many people are driven to suicide. Why? Because I've been there myself. I was nearly one of those names a few years back in 2013. I couldn't cope. I was in an abusive relationship. I was hiding my true self from so many people. I was working in a male-dominated environment. I wanted to come out and be me. I couldn't. I was being fake. I have to hide. I didn't feel like I had anyone I could turn to for support. So, like so many, I tried to overdose on tablets and booze. But it didn't work. It just made me sick and bad for a few days. And trust me, it was one bad head the day after. A while later, as I still felt like a freak, a weirdo, outcast, biddy no mates. I planned to jump. One Thursday night, I went to a bridge near where I lived and had planned to jump in front of a fast train. But luckily, it was late and I was spotted by local police officers and pulled from the bridge. They got me the help that I needed. They got me a counsellor. They suggested that I get in touch with a local LGBT charity just to get support 
and to work with them. So uh, this is what got me to where I am. I chose Pride. And I contacted them to see if I could join and help run the festival. It was the start of turning my life around and making me who I am today. It got me to 2017, where I plucked up the courage as I felt safe to transition. These days, it feels like the world is against us though. Turfs are everywhere, the BBC are publishing anti-trans articles. Then there's the LGB Alliance trying to get us back in the closet. Add in the huge waiting list from the NHS, appointments for us. I joined the waiting list back in 2017 and I'm only just getting my second referral now. So, I can understand why people are taking their own lives. Things need to change. We need a government that aren't going to try and do us in. We need a government that are going to give us the health care we need. We need to get rid of the turfs. We need to make the world a better place. We're all human. Trans rights, after all, are human rights. If you're in a bad place and watching this, please don't do something silly. Reach out. There are so many great organisations out there. For example, Support You, Tea and Coffee Trans Network, Mermaids, even Samaritans will be there for you as well. There's many, many more. Hi, my name is Megan Rodriguez and I am a queer woman who uses she, her pronouns. I am the chair of the Pride Network at Berkshire Healthcare NHS Foundation Trust and part of the admin team for the Adult Mental Health Service in Maidenhead. Firstly, thank you to my umbrella for inviting me today to give a speech in remembrance of all the trans lives we have lost. It is heartbreaking to see how many trans lives are lost every year, and I hope one day trans people can walk freely as who they are. I am a cisgender woman myself, and I can't imagine how hard it is feeling that you are living in the wrong body and dealing with dysphoria. Stonewall reports almost half of trans people in Britain have attempted suicide at least once. 84% have thought about it and more than half have been diagnosed with depression at some point in their lives. I have seen firsthand some of the difficulties and the mental health impact that being trans is. My partner of five years is a trans man who in less than a month will hopefully be starting his hormone treatment journey as part of his physical transition. He has struggled with gender dysphoria and his mental health throughout his personal life, even more so when trying to navigate the workplace. It is not surprising then that Stonewall states that one in four people report, one in four trans people report having been discriminated against at work. At Berkshire Healthcare, our people don't always feel comfortable to disclose that they're trans or non-binary. Therefore, my first priority as chair is to make BHFT an inclusive, welcoming and safe space for all. We are still in a time where it is difficult enough being trans in the workplace and I have seen the difference a welcoming and inclusive environment can be for a trans person's well-being. My partner has mentioned that he feels more respected and comfortable in his current job compared to his previous one. We have discussed the differences and I have been able to take ideas and look forward to implementing these in the trust. Two immediate ideas I will be presenting are the use of pronouns within email signatures and introducing unisex bathrooms. The use of pronouns will not only mean that trans people avoid having to come out multiple times, but should also be adopted as a normal process for all, making the use less stigmatised. A 2012 trans mental health study found that over 50% of those who took part in the survey avoided public toilets and gyms. Making sure every staff member has access to gender neutral facilities means that trans people have access to any typically gendered amenities they need, as well as providing a safe space for non-binary people that isn't limited by sex. The NHS and Berkshire Healthcare celebrate diversity and support our trans staff. I am excited to implement ideas that will make it a safe space for trans staff and clients, as well as giving advice and guidance for allies. If you are struggling with mental health or need someone to talk to, please contact the below numbers. Thank you. A message on behalf of Kelly Doward, a police officer from Thames Valley Police based in Reading. 
She is one of many lesbian and gay liaison officers, Laglos, spread across the force, and a member of Thames Valley Police LGBT Plus Network Committee, holding the role of trans liaison officer. Today I'm going to talk with you about hate crime and the importance of reporting it. I will also be telling you about the role of a Laglo officer and how we can offer specialist support to members of the LGBT plus community. What is a hate crime or hate incident? Hate incident, any incident which may or may not coincide a criminal offence which is perceived by the victim or any other person being motivated by prejudice or hate, intentionally misgendering a member of the trans community using language such as, what's your real name? Effectively, any incident motivated by hate that isn't a criminal offence. A hate crime. Any hate incident which constitutes a criminal offence perceived by the victim or any other person by being motivated by prejudice or hate e.g. criminal damage, assault, harassment, theft. This can be disability, race, religion, sexual orientation, even gender, transgender. Why should you report a hate crime or incident? If we don't know it's happening, we can't help. Underreported, not a true reflection of the number of incidents. It matters. People need to be educated and account for their behaviour helps police target areas that need further patrols and engagement. How do you report a hate crime or hate incident? If you ever find yourself the victim of hate incident or hate crime, report it. There's various ways of reporting it to TVP are as follows. You can call 101, non-emergency. You can call 999 in an emergency. You can report via Crime Stoppers. Report it at your local police station's front counter. What is a LAGLO and the LGBT network? All officers receive training to support victims of hate crime and hate incidents across the force. We have our 20 LAGLO officers all receiving extra training, especially focused on LGBT+. LAGLOs provide support to victims of LGBT plus hate crimes and incidents and offer guidance to other officers within the force. Many of our LAGLO officers belong to the LGBT plus community and have experienced hate crimes and incidents personally. We also have an internal LGBT plus network which supports all our officers and staff members. The network focuses on supporting and educating police staff and members of the public in all things LGBT plus. We attend local conferences and charity groups. We attend and march in prides all over the UK. We hosted our second Thames Valley Police Conference in October, which hosted key speakers from other forces, businesses, so that as a network we could learn from their experiences and improve the way we support the community. Here at Reading, we support the charity Mermaids, offering a safe space for members to gather each month. We also put together an LGBT plus briefing package delivering this to all teams at Reading. We aim to roll this out to other areas. In my team alone, officers are already utilising the training and signposting members of public to mermaids and other local charities, as well as asking for a LAGLO officer to attend incidents. Please spread the word within the community that we're here to listen and want to help. Please come and talk to us. Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Samantha. And together we run the Tea and Coffee Trans Network. Tea and Coffee is a network which provides alcohol-free safe spaces for trans and gender diverse people. And we're here today for Trans Day of Remembrance to explain why that still needs to happen. So every year we get together as a community to remember the enormous number of transgender and gender diverse people that we have lost throughout the year around the world. And every year, that number keeps getting bigger and bigger. Because the reality is that trans and gender diverse people are not just being killed, directly murdered, but are being driven to suicide, are being driven to self-harm and self-destruction. Yeah. we. I mean, we've had calls um, as part of the work that we do um, relating to people that 
are alone. They're trans and they're alone and they don't have any help and they don't have any support. They don't have the community that some of us have managed to make for ourselves to find that support because that's that's what we need. We don't have a whole network of everything that's just ready there for the taking we have to help each other we do have to support each other and that's all of us it's not just trans people helping one another it's all of us working together as a real community let's be honest it's not an awful lot to ask is it stop being horrible let's not overcomplicate it this is what happens people overcomplicate it they come up with these wonderful new words transphobic this or whatever it might be stop hiding behind phobias stop talking out of your backsides and trying to find excuses for hate it's not a lot to ask stop killing trans people and it's not just it's not just people dying but it's people suffering there are so many people out there they don't they don't have families like we do that support us and enable us to be able to be who we are. They suffer alone in silence and they don't have anyone. So people like us at Tea and Coffee try and do what we can to provide that support, but it gets harder and harder because we can't reach everyone. It does, and it gets harder and harder each year. That number, as you say, keeps growing. Hopefully there will come a day where we won't need to provide specific trans safe spaces. But until that day comes, we will keep doing it. Because we do need to have spaces for people to go. You're sitting there in the audience. I know, if you're trans, you already know this. If you're gender diverse, you already know this. If you're sitting there in the audience not knowing what this is about, just imagine having to have specific places you go to feel safe. Not being able to just go to the shop, the pub, the wherever it might be, without fear of someone Physically, verbally, what other ways, just generally attacking and harassing you. Just think about that for a second. Because I really do hope, genuinely, I really do hope at the bottom of my heart that one day we won't have to keep doing this. And if you're perhaps a young trans man, trans masculine, non-binary trans masculine person out there, you're not on your own. It is difficult. I know that there is a lot of... Um, talk within the media that specifically targets young trans men um, misgendering and saying horrible things about your body that simply isn't true keep going because it is worth it you will get there and you will look back and you will know that whatever they said it doesn't matter no you're right though it doesn't matter because the reality is the only person who knows who you are is you you don't have to be told by anybody else on this planet who you are you don't have to be told if you're left-handed or right-handed. You just figure it out. You know if you're trans. And if you know that you're trans, then why does anybody else have a say in it? Least of all, why, why does anybody else have any reason to hate you for just being who you are? So you're right, it doesn't matter. No, but there are people out there that can help you. There is a community out there. And if you're you know, part of the elder community, part of the people that transitioned a long time ago. If there's people that you know that are just fresh out, you know, check on them. Make sure that they're okay because they might be having a really hard time and really struggling with everything that's that's going on around us. Just make sure that they're okay and that they, that they know that they've got someone that they can talk to if they need to. Absolutely. The last year, 18 months have been insanely difficult with so much isolation so many people losing contact with their friends and families, not able to attend the big pride events that we're all used to. But you know what? Trans lives exist every single day of the year. I know this is the end of Trans Awareness Week, but we were quite aware of being trans long before this week started, and we will still be aware of it long after. So please do talk to your friends, your trans friends, reach out to communities like the Tea and Coffee Network or My Umbrella. There are amazing communities out there that are prepared to help you and that will be a support. And in the meantime, if you're not trans and you're watching this, please just be kind. It's really not that complicated. Right. There's one thing I wanted to say. Okay, go on then. Um, actually, that I, I sat in a similar situation in front of a camera this time two years ago um i did the same thing a year ago in in fact i've done the same thing for quite a few years now i really genuinely hope that 
this is the last time we have to ask. Please. Please. Just be kind. Psalm 22, plea for deliverance from suffering and hostility. To the leader, according to the deer of the dawn, a psalm of David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and they were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me, they make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver, let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled, I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. For the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my siblings, in the midst of the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live for ever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Thank you to all of our guest speakers. The next part of the event, we will be marking the names of those lost as they appear on the screen. We would like you to say their name and remember that they were cherished, loved and valued. Also for each name, we have many others that are not known. So let that reflect on those folks today. This section of the video comes with a trigger warning as some of the causes of death will be displayed on the screen. Please step away and rejoin us after this part of the video. Now, let us introduce the names of those lost to the music of Reading Rock Choir performed at Reading Minster.
We would like to mark the lives we have lost with a minute silence. Please join us. Thank you, and welcome back. So we have come to the end of our event this evening. Once again, we would like to thank all of our distinguished speakers, Lucy Hughes and the Reading Rock Choir, the Rosate Hotel, the Minster of St. Mary's Church, and everybody involved in the production team who have worked so hard behind the scenes to bring us all together this evening. And thank you for joining us today. As we go forward, let's continue to remember those who we have lost and let's work together for a better year ahead. Thank you and goodbye. Speak.